Welcome back. Now, the accomplished dancer and choreographer Gregory Makoma is turning 50 this year and will be retiring from performing. Mm, 50? He doesn't even he look... He doesn't even look a mm. day over 50. Yeah, and uh, he believes in leaving the performance, well, the perf performing space while at his peak. And as Makoma hangs up his dancing shoes... He leaves behind a legacy of creativity, passion and dedication to his craft. His influence on the dance world will be felt for years to come. And his final performance will stand as a testament to his talent and skill. Our producer Snazo Noto compiled this report. <laughs> My name is Gregory Makoma. I'm the founder and creative director of Wuyani Dance Theatre, which I founded in 1999. Um, yeah, I was born and bred in, uh, sorry, I was born in, in, in Soweto, Orlando East, and that's where I grew up. I grew up quite close to a hostel which housed migrant workers who were coming from different parts of Southern Africa. And I think that's where my love for dance started, because I would go and watch them perform their traditional forms over the weekends and I was amazed by their skill of, 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 of dancing, you know, um, even though I didn't know what was choreography, I didn't know what was dancing in a professional manner meant, but I got, I got hooked and I didn't stop from there. I'm brought up in a country that is full of possibilities and contradictions, as you know, you know, and I was a child of apartheid era, and somehow I found my own way to, trans to transact into the new democracy. Um, so I grew up with that experience of being chased by the cops, by the soldiers, by experiencing um, burning houses in front of me, experiencing burning tires, and experiencing also, you know, the, the burning flesh. So all of those things have actually encompassed my thinking in terms of making work. And being exposed to the mind workers in that time, it daunted on me years later that their performance, their way of expressing themselves through movement and song was their own way of dealing with their own trauma, of living in those, you know, um, very challenging, um, compounds and hostels and working and digging the mines and for the diamonds and and gold that they never had to own so yeah it's those things that I think about it I think about them I think about um, their loved ones that they were leaving behind so my work always questions my own surroundings my own circumstances of which I was brought up in and how can I uh, conscientize you know, the public, but also how can I allow um, the younger generation to know of our history, of our painful history, but also through that history to learn so that we can never repeat those atrocities ever again. The role of, of dance in society, it is to inspire somehow our conscious mind, is to how somehow allow us to think differently of situations, to push us into a, a place where we can think deeply about issues that are affecting us. We can think deeply about our politics in our own country. And as they say, you know, politics somehow are watchdogs. We're watching, we're very aware of what's going on around us. And in most cases, we are the first ones to react to those um, you know uh, um, um, atrocities and so yeah art has a place in in life I think it's there to not only serve as a form of euphoria to make us feel good but it, it also there to make us think very deeply about troubling issues I, I grew up in in an environment where dance and music were very much in the open it was accessible um, over the weekends my father will play jazz um, albums, you know, Brahu Masikela, Ma Miriam Mageba, were the household names, you know, and then also on the other side, I was introduced to the pop culture, you know, the Michael Jacksons, but also the new urban forms that were emerging in, 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 in Soweto, like uh, Stratamia and Mpakanga, so all of those sounds 
I was interested in them and I wanted to know more about you know the sounds hence most of my work is sung in a cappella most of the works refers to Isikatamiya most of the works are about our claiming or reclaiming our own traditions and forms and ensuring that they are a vehicle in allowing my body to transact between you know the past and the now and hopefully helping me to navigate the future. I don't know if I've got a favorite piece, but you know, I do know that every work that I, I perform personally is has become my personal favorite because I have to put my mind and soul, uh, my physical being into that work. So it's not only just about creating work, but one of the memories or memorable moments of me watching my own work was very recently in Durban at a Playhouse, where Sion was performed in front of a full audience of um, people who were coming from different parts of KwaZulu Natal and is that reaction, the immediate reaction of an audience. It felt like we were in church. It felt like we were congregating together with an audience. And for me, that was the aha moment because art is about that. It's about the immediacy. It's about how we react to it as it happens on stage. So to see that reaction of an audience that was absolutely in tune with every sound, with every movement, um, with every change of scene was remarkable and yeah, it's, it, it, it made me to be so aware that this is the reason we make work in this country because you don't find it anywhere else. In Europe, audience has been taught to sit and watch. In this country, we react. I appreciate the reaction, though it annoys a couple of other people, you know, <laughs> who are still stuck in that mentality that art should just be viewed and not be reacted upon. I want a reaction and uh, because it makes me feel validated at that point in time and it makes me feel that I am one in tune with an audience. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for collaboration. Uh, I think, you know, we can only gain by collaborating. Um, and it's important for me uh, that I collaborate with people who uh, already have questions in their minds about you know, the status quo of where we are as a country, as the world, where we're moving into. And somehow, together we can navigate and try to find the answers. We might not get to the answers, but we might find ourselves raising even more questions. Um, for an audience, you know, to try and figure it out by themselves. But collaboration is key in the work that I do. I've collaborated with Simpure Dana, I've collaborated with Volta Kellerman. Uh, these are award-winning um, musicians. But also what is key is that here, in most cases, we see that it's always the other way around, where the dancer becomes the backdrop of a music video or of a musician on stage. And I wanted to change that narrative to say that let the dance lead and let the singers be the ones who are then uh, accompanying the dance. So I think that was critical for me to, to have that power, uh, for dance to have that power. And, and we've done incredibly well with that, you know, with all the works that we've done, um, Sion, Joys of Sharing, um, Moya with Simpiwe Dana, all of those works have really propelled and allowed dance to be the vehicle in that collaboration space. In the spirit of, of collaboration, I think one has to think about generosity. You know, you've got to come in there as players and be generous about your offerings. Um, and one of those people who I've worked with was Idris Elba, and, and his generosity and spirit was felt in the work. Um, as, as well as, you know, working with um, William Kentridge in The Head and the Load, his spirit and, and generosity is felt in the work. I mean, reaching 50 is, is maturity more than anything else. And, and I look back with so much pride, but one question that was lingering in my head as we were thinking about how are you going to celebrate your 50th was about legacy. You know, what are the legacy projects that I want to um, to bring back or maybe to, to make, you know, um, because I think it's great to, to leave something behind or to watch your legacy being lived. And I, and I see it. I see it being lived through the company Vuani Dance Theatre, through the projects that I'm making, through, you know, young people like Musa Mota who, 
who made history at the Britain's Got Talent. So to see that legacy being lived, I think it is, it is amazing. So yeah, maturity, it is, you know, being 50, I feel, there is a sense of maturity, the way I also approach work, the way I approach things, whether on a personal level or even on a business level, it has to come with a lot of maturity. It has matured a little more. So I think the audience are seeing that, you know, something that has matured, you know, they, they still see the same piece, but I feel it has grown. It has really gone through a test of time. Um, like good wine or, you know, good cheese, they mature with time and they get just get, they get better with time. So I think, you know, this is where we are with Exit Exist. But also it's reconnecting me with the creative team, the original creative team, like Happy Mortar, who was one of the singers and who, who is now the music director for, 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 for this season at the Market Theatre. So to bring back that team is also saying thank you to them, you know, for their generosity to James Noble, who's, who's directing us in, in, this, in this work, to say thank you because it's of his generosity that we have this work. It's also the generosity of St. Pure Dana, who who's allowed us to use his, her music um, in, and, and to be transcribed to, to male voices, which has never happened before. So to see that generosity of these artists who are saying, who have always, you know, been part of the evolution of this work, it's, it's amazing, it's phenomenal. And, and, I, and I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that report by Morning Life producer Sinazo Noto. All right, he's uh, uh, staging his last play at the National Arts Festival Exit Exist, uh, which obviously the National Arts Festival starts on the 22nd, on the 22nd. of June. Uh, so that's where um, he will stage his last play. He's also uh, a standard bank young artist a couple of years ago mm. he won a uh, young artist so it's nice that he's ending his career at Bakanda, you know mm. at the same festival uh, as well